Okay, moving on to um, let's check the center of gravity now. So um, on the plants, the center of gravity is shown right here, CG. It's just on the edge or kind of just behind the main, um, the main spar, spars on the wing. That's typical. So in general, the center of gravity usually ends up being about a third of the way in from the leading edge. So if you have a plane that you don't have the instructions for or the plans, someone gave it to you, you bought it, whatever the case is, you don't know this, um, a good way to check your center of gravity or a good sort of starting point is to assume about a third of the way in the, <clears throat> a third of the way back from the leading edge. So for this plane, I measure it, I think I'm at two and three quarters. Yeah, I'm about two and three quarters. The entire um, width of the plane is about nine, oops, boy, I'm under here, is about nine inches, a little over nine inches. So you can kind of see we're about a third of the way in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll measure this and I'll mark it on the wing and we'll go from there. All right, so as I mentioned, I just put, um, kind of previously, I just loosely put my, um, my receiver, I just kind of packed the receiver, the batteries in here. Um, I'm just gonna loosely kind of stick it in this spot. Now I built this plane sort of per specs. I didn't add, I didn't put a really big engine on it. I didn't change anything. So I'm basically gonna be going off the plans and putting things where they need to be. And this is the compartment right here for the receiver and the battery. So I'm hoping that it will kind of balance out. I think it's going to, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. But let's go ahead and check it. So I'm just gonna leave this in here loose and then of course I'll secure it um, once we get the, um, the center of gravity set. Um, then I'll go ahead and I'll put this in more securely. All right, so the first thing I need to do is go ahead and put the wing on. And let me grab this guy. I'm not gonna hook it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it in here where it's supposed to go. It actually fits really nice. I'm really happy with the way it, the way it works, the way it fits on here. Pops it in like this, okay. Just like that. Okay, so in order to attach this to the wing, we're gonna be using rubber bands. So, um, I'm, I just chose these number 64 rubber bands. These are just sort of a standard kind of thicker rubber band. Now, usually I don't think kind of need more than about maybe eight or 10 on here. I'm not gonna do all those right now. I don't need to have it hooked up for a flight. So a four is gonna be doing, doing pretty well. Um, and then, you know, I buy these rubber bands. I bought this package of them, but you wanna check if you're doing a wing mount with rubber bands, you wanna make sure your rubber bands aren't rotted. So make sure your rubber bands are in good shape before you go on a, go on a flight. Oops. Let me just whack my thing here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mount the uh, mount the wing with the rubber bands. I need to be careful because I want to get this centered like right here, and I want to be careful around the aileron. I don't want to snap the aileron, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it like that. Bring another one here. Hold it on. that it's probably good enough to do this yeah I don't even need that but I'll go ahead and cross one over that and this is how I do it when I mount it for a flight I'll do I'll do a couple along the side and then I'll cross it and I'll do a couple in the in the middle like that so that's gonna hold it just for our purposes right now and we go ahead and flip this over Make sure my wing is straight. Things look pretty good. Let me flip this over so we can look at the bottom of it. And now I can go ahead and measure my where my center of gravity is gonna be. All right, so remember our setting was uh, two and three quarters. So I'm just gonna use this little small, little uh, right angle um, dude, and I'll put this on two and three quarters, which is like right there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'll measure off the leading edge. I'll hold this on here and, um, that'll help me kind of keep it straight off the leading edge. Okay. So, um, Sharpies are cool. You can use a Sharpie to mark on monocoat because it'll come off pretty easy. All you have to use is a little bit of alcohol or acetone and it'll just wipe right off. Um, problem I have just because of the um, dark color on here I can mark it like I can mark my my dude right there and I can see my mark but it's kind of hard to see so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of tape on here to help me better see it 
see it better. So I know I'm gonna be like right about here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark now two and a half, I mean two and three quarters. And that puts me right, like I said, right about there. So there's my mark. And let's see if I can get that. See it right here. So I'll do this on the other side. Hope we don't drop the airplane. Okay, so let's take a look here and kind of glary in here, but so I got my two, oops, got my two marks here and here. So, and then you see it's kind of right behind. I don't know if you can pick it up, but you can see the main or the main spar is going like right here. So I'm right at that spot. Obviously it should be right because I measured correctly. And now we can go ahead and check our center of gravity. Let me put this back down for a second. All right, so this plane is um, kind of a small plane and it's pretty light. So I think I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna try to hold it up and check the balance that way. Um, so let me pull this guy up here carefully. I don't wanna smack anything, but I got my area, I got my mark right here. So I'll put one finger right there, just like I'm pointing at it. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna roll it over here. Hold this guy like that. Now I'm right there. Let's see if I can balance this. This is kind of tricky. Let's see where I am here. Uh, Got to get away from my wheels. So you can see that I'm actually balanced pretty well. It's hard to pick up. Let me see if I can go down here. Let's see where I am finger away from here yeah so there you go all right so and that's cool because I kind of expected that because you know you can't there's not a lot of leeway and I put everything in per the plan so everything should be good so that's great this this balance works out nicely um, seem to work out okay okay so I want to now I want to check the um, the weight of the plane, I also want to check my wing loading to kind of see where that landed. So per the um, specifications, they don't give you a wing loading as I mentioned before, but they say the weight of the plane is going to be um, like 50 to 56 ounces. And then my, there's my wing area of 450 square inches. So let me go ahead, I'm going to go measure that, I'm going to weigh it. Let me grab my scale. Alright, so I'm going to weigh my plane using this, this little handheld scale. Um, now this is nothing special. This is something that you can get for like measuring. I think they use this for luggage, for traveling. I think um, people who fish use these things. So it's general purpose kind of handheld scale and I have it set to ounces. So let me um, figure out how I'm going to hang this plane up but I'll go ahead and I'll measure it and we'll get our weight. Okay so the way I'm going to do this I'm just going to use this string and I'm going to hoist it. But first I'm going to check my this thing's pretty accurate, so it's got nothing. It's not really reading anything. Oops, it's not reading anything off the string. All right, here we go. Let's check it out. Now, you're going to do this. When you do the center of um, gravity and you're checking for your balance, you do that with an empty tank. And I'm also going to weigh it on an empty tank. So hopefully, I don't know if we can see this or not, but I got 54 ounces. All right, so I got 54 ounces on the on the weight. Let me put it down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about wing loading um, real quick. So if you know a lot about wing loading, then you may wanna fast forward through this section, but I'm just gonna do this just in case maybe some people out there aren't really sure what it is or what it's all about. Um, I'm not an expert in this type of thing. I'm just gonna tell you kind of what I know about it. So wing loading is kind of a simple little equation and it's just the, um, the plane weight okay which is usually expressed in ounces over the um, wing area okay which is usually expressed in square feet feet squared put this out here okay and you'll see um, these numbers on kind of specifications for um, for plane for planes you'll see them on ARF kits and you'll see them in in kits that you build and so on and so forth you'll see they list wing loading. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and calculate that for, um, for this plane. You'll notice here in my specs, by the way, that they don't include wing loading. They give the area of the wing and then the weight, kind of the, um, the weight range, but they don't give the actual wing loading. So anyhow, so we know from our measurements that uh, we had 54 ounces and that's with um, an empty tank. That was the weight of the plane. Now on the specifications for the plans, they have it at 50 to 56 ounces in the plan. So they have it at 50 to 56 ounces. For some reason on the box, they have it at 53 to 56 ounces. And, uh, but you can see here that um, I came in pretty good with the, with the weight on the plane. Now I know that I added a few things to the plane. I added the tail wheel section or the tail wheel um, gear and all that type of stuff in the back. I did do some reinforcement with some extra wood on the servo tray. Um, and I did put additional glue and adhesives in places. So I know that I added weight to the plane, um, but I'm glad that I came in sort of, um, sort of in the middle really of the, of the range um, for, the spec for the specified weight. Okay, so let me do the, my wing loading calculation. Now I did this on another piece of paper so I can do it neatly here. So don't think that I'm doing this all in my head because I'm not. So let's zoom in here. So the weight of my plane is um, 54 ounces, right? And then the area of the um, wing off of the plans is 450 square inches. So it's gonna be 450 inches squared. But as I mentioned, the, um, the wing loading is uh, in feet squared. So I just have to convert my inches squared to, to foot squared, which is pretty simple. I'm just gonna say 144 um, inches squared um, per foot squared, or is it's 144 inches per um, squared per square foot, right? So I just got to multiply it by that to convert it. And so what happens is our inches fall out of this and then we do the math. So basically it's 54 times 144 divided by 450. And that comes up to this magic number of 17.28 ounces per foot squared. So that is the wing loading that I have right now on this plane with an empty tank. All right, so what does that mean? Um, so if you look at this table that I found online, you can see that they give different values of wing loading for different types of planes. You see the lower wing loading planes are things like the sail planes. And then the trainers are between that 15 and 20 ounces or that 15 and 20 um, uh, wing loading value. And then once you get above the 20, you start getting into like the sport type of aerobatic type planes. And then above those, you start getting into the scale, the scale planes. So, um, you know, in general, a low wing loading number um, is, are typical of kind of slow flying kind of planes like, like sail planes, gliders, things like a Piper Cub may have a lower wing loading. Um, and then the higher wing loading planes or wing loaded planes are things like your scale planes, warbirds, things like that. And then in between those values are sort of those sort of extremes are things like your trainers and then your kind of sport planes. And like I said, the sport, sport planes are kind of generally above, above 20. So um, yeah, so what I'm kind of happy to see here, what I am happy to see here is that my um, wing loading value came in kind of where it should be, right? It came in in a trainer, it's sort of in the high, well, mid to high teens. And um, it makes sense because my, my ounces were also within range. So that's cool. I just wanted to check it out and it looks like my wing loading is okay. So I, I guess um, you could talk a lot about what's the value of wing loading for, for RC um, planes or for the hobby. And I think there's probably all kinds of value in it, but um, a few things to consider. One of them is if you, um, for people who like to build their own planes and kind of design their own planes, um, a lot of times they start that design thinking about things like wing loading, kind of like how they want that plane to actually perform. Um, if they want to design something like a glider or a trainer, obviously they're not going to want to have a wing loading of like 25. And then the opposite is true if they want to have like a fighter plane or something like that nature, um, they want to have a high wing loading. 
So that's that's it's a useful number to think about if you're doing that type of work. Um, the other thing that it's useful for is if you are looking for a plane um, and you want to know kind of the characteristics of that plane. Um, if you have the wing loading value, you can kind of easily see if that's the kind of plane you want. You know, maybe you want a really slow sort of trainer type of plane and you're not sure about it. And you look at the wing loading and it says something like, you know, 15 or something like that, or it's another type of trainer plane and it's a 10, then that kind of helps you make that decision. If, for example, you're looking for something that's more of a scale plane or something that's going to fly like, you know, aerobatic or, um, you know, sport type planes, you're looking for something with a higher wing loading. So um, sometimes you don't have all the information in front of you with what you want to get, especially when you're kind of shopping around and, and looking at stuff. So kind of having this knowledge is kind of helpful for you. That's the way that's the way I look at it. All right, so that's it for my little spiel on um, wing loading. Um, if you know a lot about wing loading, you know, it was probably pretty boring. Um, and you also know about there's other things like there's cubic loading and there's other type of parameters you can look at. But um, wing loading is just sort of a basic thing. Um, if you're new to it or you didn't really understand it, I hope that was a little um, informative and interesting. And, and then I encourage you also to kind of just do what I do is um, look online, research it, see what it's all about and maybe it'll be helpful helpful for you um, at some point. All right, so as I mentioned, I, I do have to install the uh, transmitter and the battery now. So I already packed my transmitter, as you can see here, I just packed it in some foam and then I wrapped it in some tape and I put some double-sided uh, Velcro. I'm just gonna peel this off when I'm ready. I'm gonna stick it like right over here. And then the battery, just down here, pull that out of there, come out battery. Oops, sorry, there's the battery. So the battery, I'm just gonna put it straight down um, and mount it on the floor of the fuselage. And the way I'm gonna do that is I got my friend, my extruded foam, um, which is the uh, extruded foam pieces that I have. This is just insulation foam. Um, it's pretty stiff, like I've mentioned before. So I'm just gonna make like a little, I just made this little sort of funky looking tray. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy like this, and that's gonna hold it and I'm gonna put, I have these Velcro, I put these Velcro straps around it. So I went and I got myself some, I have little Velcro pieces. Uh, kind of going fast here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna buckle it in with some Velcro, like that, like that right there. So I just cut a little, you know, thing here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to epoxy I'm going to epoxy this straight down inside of the bottom here. And then the Velcro, I can obviously just take it so I can get the battery out. So um, this is gonna go straight in like this. And then the transmitter, I mean the receiver is gonna pop in above that. And I'll probably maybe put some little bit of retaining foam or something just to kind of hold everything down. But I do, I don't want my battery moving around, right? You don't want your, it's pretty heavy. So I wanna secure that, but I also wanna be able to get it out. So I'm gonna do it this way. All right, so I put the, um I put my little foam tray back in here with the Velcro and I um, epoxied it in there with some five minute epoxy. So now I can go ahead and put my battery in and we'll pack the receiver and we'll see how that looks. All right, so let's put this in here. Let's put that down like that. And it's kind of like a little seat belt in there. I'll put the Velcro over it, hold it in place. It's like that, there we go. All right, so there's the battery in there. You can see it. Yeah. All right, now for the receiver, like I said, I just had this double-sided Velcro on here. I mean, it's double-sided adhesive on the Velcro. And this way, once this is stuck in there, I should be able to pull it off if I have to, but um, this is just gonna jam sort of right up in here. There's the, oops, there's the receiver in there. All right. Okay, so now we gotta go ahead and get rid of this spaghetti. So um, these two wires here, one of these is gonna be for the um, hook into the battery, um, and one is gonna be the charger. So I'll leave those out here. Then this guy right here is gonna be for the um, ailerons. And then the rest of this, these are the antenna. So I'll set up the antenna last but I'm gonna go ahead and just get some um, 
I'm going to use uh, some tie wraps, some small tie wraps, and I'm just going to sort of clean this up and kind of pack the wire in. Okay, well, actually, I was able to, um, if you can see in here, but I was able to stuff all the wire kind of back in this little pocket in here, back by this receiver, I mean, by the um, servo. And it's also open a little bit below there. So I was able to pack all that wire back inside there. And then I just stuffed a piece of like um, foam rubber or just foam inside there, just kind of packed it in in that open spot just to kind of keep it locked in. So um, again, so these are the these these are the battery hookups right here, their charger. This is the aileron. And now I just got to hook up the antenna. Now the way this antenna works is that they have to be nine degree angles from each other. So however I can get them in there, just they just have to be at 90 degree angles. That's the way it's set up. And I'm going to use I'm just going to use basic black um, electrical tape. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'll secure it up against the fuselage that way. So let me do that real quick. All right, so there we go. We got the um, everything set up. So here's the, uh, I used electrical tape, like I said, to mount the antenna. This one goes under here, um, off the receiver. That closes up and everything's packed in here nicely. And of course, these are gonna be uh, the charger and the um, battery hookup, which, um, so once I, when I go to a flight, when I go to do a, um, when I pack it up for a flight, I'll just kind of put these in here and kind of stuff them under this. Should be okay. Um, nothing's going to get in the way of the uh, throttle. I think it'll be all right there. So anyhow, I think we're all set up with this. Okay, if you're wondering about these two pieces of blue tape I've had on here, um, that's just because earlier on I put my identification information in here, uh, my contact information. It's got my name and my phone number, and then I have my... Um, I have my FAA registration number in there. So um, I fly in an urban area and actually near a freeway and a park area and places like that. So I try to fly by the book when I fly. Um, so I, I'm a member of the AMA. Um, I, am, I have my FAA registration and I also have my contact info on here. Um, hopefully nothing will ever go wrong, but if it does, at least I've kind of um, crossed my T's and dotted my I's when it comes to stuff like that. So I'll take this off when I when I fly. I just left them on here just because of um, I didn't want it on the video. All right, so a couple of things to point out here. Um, one of them is that you may notice that before my number was number 20. Well, what happened was I was cleaning off this portion of the, um, the fuselage, trying to get some junk gunk off of it, and I was using a little bit of acetone, and I rubbed it across that decal I had on here, and it just smeared it off. So, um, Basically what happened is I had a, I didn't have 20 anymore. So I just replaced the number with this 54 and um, I put it back on the rudder also. So um, yeah, so acetone doesn't work well with um, the major decals um, that I used um, for, for the plane. The other thing that I did is I just cleaned up, I put, I hope you can kind of see this, I put a little bit of monocoat um, just on the exit areas where the control rods were where they come out, um, see that. Um, just to sort of clean that area up, just kind of finish it off. All right, well, that's it. Um, this plane is finished. Um, I don't have anything else to add at this point. That was sort of a long journey. I think with making these videos, it does take longer to kind of produce, produce something. Um, there's a lot of time that goes into making the videos that I didn't really anticipate. So, um, you know, I did my best at that. But the kit itself um, went together pretty well and it's finished. So now um, I think I'm gonna get ready for its main flight. That'll be the next video. And hopefully I can get some good footage of, um, of the plane. Um, hopefully I won't crash it. So yeah, so anyhow, that's it. We're done with, this, done with the Barnstormer and let's get this thing up in the air and see how it, see how it flies. <laughs>